My name is Specialist Skolinski. Today I'm going to show you how to rig your Molly 4K rod for bar, basic airboard refresher, in the 82nd Airboard Division. So yesterday I went to bar, and now I'm bar current, and we had a block of instruction where they showed us how they wanted the Molly 4K to be rigged. And I'm going to show you right now exactly what the Jump Master showed us. This is exactly how they did it. So the first thing you do is take these, thread them through there. Then we're going to go through here, just like that. You want to make sure there's not any twists, anything like that. Make sure it looks neat. You're going to have 30 minutes to do this, which is a lot of time. So. You don't really have to worry a ton about speed. You can kind of make sure that, take the time to make sure everything looks halfway decent. Go through that one on the other side. Now, I'm gonna feed these through here. And there's a specific way that they want this done. You have to make something called a quick release there's a few ways to make one, this is how I like to do it. Take my little guy right there, and I feed it back through here. And then you're gonna pull on this to tighten it. You pull on the top, it doesn't do anything, right? You're just pulling that slack. But if you pull on the bottom right here, you see how it makes it tight like that. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other one. My ruck's a little awkward the way it's packed, so this one kind of tends to go out this way, but it's not a big deal. Same thing. We're going to make that. We're going to feed it back through, just like that. And again, we're going to pull on that bottom, and you can see that it's starting to get tighter doesn't have to be super tight you don't have to like crank it down as tight as it'll possibly go it just kind of has to look neat you don't want a ton of slack I like to go kind of tight same thing over here and then you just kind of what they say is they want a three finger Quick release. So you just kind of put three fingers in there, about, and that's kind of where you want it. You don't want it much bigger than that because it needs to fit inside this guy. And if you have the quick release super big, one, it's it's not what they say they want, and two, it's going to be outside of this. And they're going to make you redo it. So that looks pretty good to me. And we're going to S fold this. doesn't have to be super neat. Get my tape. If you can get your tape under there. Just like that. And then you got this. And then should be able to all fit under there. Yeah, you can see there's no excess. There's nothing sticking out. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Yeah, just like that. It's not perfect, you know, got a little extra guy here, but That didn't really seem to be a problem the other day when I did it. Just as long as it's... The main thing they really looked for was they just lifted this up and they checked to make sure you had a quick release. It wasn't going outside of the cover. And that was really all they were concerned about. Just like that. And... I'm going to put the cover on. 
just like that. Voila. So that takes care of that. Now, you're gonna move down here. So this is where you're gonna get all your little loose pieces. So these, there's a specific way they want this done to be put on there. You want the claw part, the opening part to be facing the ground when you put this through. Okay, there we go. That threw me for a second. These are all the way up to the top. Should be like that. You want the claw to be, I call it the claw, the opening part to be facing the ground. Yellow goes, white goes through the yellow. And then green goes through the white. Red goes through the green. And then we're going to take one of these. The red goes through the grommet. And then this, it's very important you put this on the right way. Mine's all twisted. So when you put this on, there's only supposed to be one twist in it, the manufacturer's twist. And it's going to go right here. And you can see it's that's how it's supposed to be you're gonna take this cable and you're gonna feed it through right there it's gonna go through there and we're gonna do the same thing over here we're gonna get our yellow again we're gonna make sure that claw opening facing the ground feed that through feed that through feed that through And get this guy right through there and we're gonna get our cable I forgot something already this cable has to go through here like that it's very important because very easy to forget and if you forget it you have to redo a lot of work and it's a big pain it's got to go through there Just feed that through. Same thing over here. We're gonna feed it through. Okay. Now, you've got these guys. I forget the official name. I forget the official names of all of this stuff. I knew it at one point. I'm gonna click that. We're gonna tighten it. Again, you don't have to like cinch it down as tight as it'll possibly go. I'm just gonna get it firm for right now. Make sure there's no twists in this. Make sure it's not going, um, you're not going around the straps. When this comes up, you notice I'm not going through any of this stuff on the side. I've got all these, these straps and stuff right here. I'm just ignoring all of that. Taking it right here. And I'm gonna pull. Okay. So now that they're both in there, I'll tighten it a little bit more. And then I'm just gonna fold these up. And I'm gonna have my tape ready. I like to tape these, you don't actually have to. You have a webbing retainer, but I don't know. I like to tape them. This is about the size they went at when they did this. And we're gonna do it right there. Okay, webbing retainer goes through, just like that. Same thing on the other side. We're gonna fold it up.
like that. Get my tape. And the uh, thing they said the other day was go once around with the tape. So you don't need to go like crazy with the tape. Just once around is good. That's good. Let's get up here. So the only thing that's left now is we're gonna do our lowering line. Lowering line is pretty simple. Mine has creases in it. I don't know if they all have creases in them, but just gonna start, just go off where the creases are. We want this to be pretty tight, you know. If it's super loose, it's just gonna fall apart. So it's better to take your time, make sure it's neat and compact on the first time. Just like that. And when you get to the end, you notice I got this crease right here. I don't know if you can see it, but um, the last one you go halfway and then it comes back. So even though it's got this connector thing, you know, don't try to take it all the way and do that because it's not gonna work. Once you try to attach it to the ruck, you're gonna have a problem. So you go halfway on that last one and then this connects to this like that. Just kind of get it neat and then you package all this up. There's always a little bit of excess like sticking out of the lowering line. When I do it at least, it's not a big deal. Just don't want it to look awful. That connects right there. And then you're gonna do something called a girth hitch here. So the thing they'll always tell you to do is go north to south. So what that means is north is the top of your ruck. It's up where your name would be. South is the bottom of your ruck. So you have this X at the back. You're going to go through from the top down to the bottom. And then you're going to take that. You're going to feed it through just like that. If, you're, uh, if your lowering line is not packed super nice and you know it, be kind of gentle with this part. All right. Now we got that. And what we're going to do, we're going to take this over the left uh, arm strap, right? We're not going to go under. We're going to go over. And we're going to get our rubber bands and you only need two rubber bands to do this. I like to do three. It's just me. And you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just feeding it through, make my loop and I feed it through. And then now we've got a loop on each side. Take my loop through like that. Just like that. And I'm gonna do one more. that you're not in line through here okay. and then we just feed the lowering line through these little loops we just made just 
so that it's secure on the side of the Molly 4K. And that's it. That's the whole thing. That's how you rig your Molly 4K from R of the 82nd Airborne Division. You'll have 30 minutes to do that. And you'll notice you don't have to do anything with the frame. The frame should already be in there. You don't have to take the frame out. You'll notice there's a bunch of other straps. Like, you know, I've got this strap. I've got straps on the back. You don't have to mess with those. It's good to just have them in their webbing retainers, maybe taped up before you start so the whole thing looks neat but bar's not really focused on those other straps. It's just all the stuff I covered. Uh, one more note for bar, always show up on time. I've been to bar three times and people get kicked every time for being late. Make sure your helmet looks neat. You can see this is my helmet that I wore yesterday for bar. It's got uh, seven helmet pads. If you don't have all the helmet pads, your helmet looks wrong. You can get kicked out for that too, so just make sure your helmet's neat. Uniform for bar is pretty much what I'm wearing right now. We got OCPs, it's the PC and the subdued flag. You don't have to wear your beret to bar. You're gonna need your CAC, you're gonna need your dog tags, and the helmet, air items, Molly 4K. I think that's about it. If you can help it, um, it's good to have your uniform sewn on. It's just like a little thing, but that's pretty much it, yeah. So if you do what I showed you just now, based on my performance yesterday at bar, you should be fine for the rigging of the ruck, which is the first thing you do at bar. So thank you very much. Uh, the end. Whoa. Yeah.